Hey everyone, welcome to Learning Sharp. I thought we'd talk about abrasives tonight. Um, there, there's a lot better videos out there, and a lot, a lot of people, a lot more knowledgeable than myself on the in-depth workings and makeups of abrasives. But I just wanted to give a quick and easy rundown and talk about some of the ones that I like some of their differences, what they're good at, and so forth, and just kind of keep it simple and not get crazy about it for now. Um, we'll start with one of the ones just about everybody knows about. You know, this this is your this is your Spider Co. Ceramic Ultra Fine. These are a centered ceramic stone whether it be the medium fine or ultra fine which are there's I, I find conflicting information as far as the grit ratings depending on where you research and where you look the stone up the medium should be somewhere around 1000 1200 the fine is going to be somewhere around 2500 your ultra fine is going to be around 4k they're incredibly hard they don't require lapping They'll abrade just about any steel. They load easily and they can be slow going as far as cutting, but they will create a highly refined, highly polished edge. There is no reason you can't get hair whittling with these. I'll show you my fine. It hasn't been cleaned in a while. They do load quick. Make sure you can see that. And when they do get loaded, they slow down. These are, but they clean easily with, we can clean them with a magic eraser. Um, you can clean them with an actual normal pencil eraser. You can use Comet and an abrasive pad or a scouring pad, or you can use a uh, barkeeper's friend. They clean up really well, really quick. Um, there, we can, uh, piece of magic eraser that I just got wet you can see they wipe clean incredibly quick as far as when you're sharpening and then you can always clean them up really good later being centered ceramic they will crack if you drop them they can be used dry or you can put a little bit of water on them some guys like honing oil I don't prefer it but they're a really awesome, affordable set to get you into freehand sharpening. And they have no issues producing a terrific edge. A truly highly refined, good polish. You won't get a true mirror, but you can get a high level of polish. I'll go ahead and put that guy away. Another one I just got that I want to do a review on. These are the Baryonyx. These are an aluminum oxide stone. Being aluminum oxide, they act a lot like an oil stone. They don't shed abrasive. They load fairly quickly, but it does not affect the speed. This one's around 120 grit. Show you another one also. This is their finer. 400 this is the arctic fox they're pressure dependent though you can go incredibly light and get a beautiful scratch pattern with these or you can really just lay on them and i mean a lot of pressure and they will remove steel like no other i don't i don't know that there's anything out there that removes steel as well as these aluminum oxide stones um doesn't mean i haven't tried it or seen it or used it make a suggestion if you have something else i should try but these are really impressive. These are about 13 bucks. And being the shape they are, you can sharpen a lot of different things with them. So far they're wearing pretty good. They came lapped well. I've got, I've got no issues with them for what they are and what they do. I, I reprofiled a VG10 Delica with them. No problems whatsoever. You know, they are aluminum oxide. They're nothing fancy. 
but but they work incredibly well not a really good option to, to get you into freehand the shape's a little funky because they're designed to sharpen all kinds of things they fit in a stone holder a little crooked but nothing that's a problem again these are aluminum oxide silicon carbide one of my favorites they're very forgiving they, they give excellent feedback they're a joy to sharpen on they wear well you can soak them in water about 5 10 15 minutes you can them for, forget about them for a half an hour and just keep them wet and they sharpen wonderful they lap well these are or this particular one i should say is a gridomatic 2500 Again, silicon carbide will abrade any steel. They, they have zero polish factor to them. They're nothing but a nice, nice even scratch pattern, satin finish. Gridomatic has them uh, from 120 up to this 2500. I think they go 120, 240, I believe there's a 400, 600, 1200, 2500. Oh, there's 1,000 in there too. I have them in one by six for my TS Prof also. These range from about $20 to $48. Really, really nice stone for the money. They'll do just about anything you ask of them, except polish. I really, really enjoy these. They're affordable. You get the whole set cheap. They're readily available. And I really like the feel, the way they come lapped, and everything about them from Gridomatic. Keep flipping that one over wrong. Another silicon carbide option is the Norton Crystallon. This is a fine. Their fine is 320 grit. There you go. Put the name in there. These come in several different sizes, two by six, three by eight. You can get them in uh, different thicknesses, a half inch, you can get them in a one inch. You can get them in a dual stone, a coarse and a fine. They come in coarse, medium, fine. I do not have the coarse and medium grits on hand. I liked how this one feels. It, it's a, even though it's a 320, the way it's lapped and the way they make the stone, it's a little bit coarser than my Gridomatic 240, at least the way it feels. Awesome option. These are about 20 bucks. You can get them on eBay. You can get them through sharpeningsupplies.com. You can get them everywhere. Awesome stones, though. Our next option here, this is an Ultra Sharp diamond plate from Best Sharpening Stones. This is a 2200 grit. These are electroplated diamond stones. So we have a steel plate and our abrasive, our diamond particles are electroplated to the surface. These will leave your most aggressive scratch pattern of pretty much all the sharpening stones out there. This is a combination plate from them as well. This is a 300 and a 1200. Again, electroplated, which means all of our abrasive is plated to the top of the plate. These get a bad wrap because they will wear out. You will eventually scrub the abrasive off. Excessive pressure makes them wear out faster. But these will leave the most aggressive and toothy edge out of all the stones that you're going to try and sharpen with. Some folks don't like how they feel. I enjoy them. I like how they feel. They give good edges. They give really good working edges. They will hog some steel off fast. You got to be careful. You can get, get going in a motion and yeah, they'll take too much off. This one right here, this 300, 1200 will do just about everything you want though. You can make the jump to the 2200. They also have a 3000. 
I don't have that one yet. I'd like to get it. They produce a killer. Nice satin, toothy edge. With a nice even scratch pattern. Easy to clean. Again, they can be cleaned with uh, Best Sharpening Supplies recommends Crud Cutter. You can get it at Home Depot Lowe's. Um, I pretty much use my Magic Eraser. You can use a normal pink school eraser, but you get little pieces of the eraser and you gotta wash the plate before you use it or you feel every little bump as you're sharpening. You can pick these up. The, these vary in price. I think the 2200 and the 3000 plate, uh, somewhere around $75. The, and about the same, $65, $70 for the 300, 1200 combination plate. Last one we'll talk about. This is a Venive resin bonded diamond stone. So what we have here is the diamond particles are actually embedded throughout a resin. It has, it has a hard binder. It's a non-abrasive binder that, that binds the diamond particles suspended in it. So what that does is it gives a softer diamond cut. They won't cut as hard. I shouldn't say they won't cut as hard. They aren't going to leave as deep as scratches. You don't get that coarser edge off of them. These polish like just insane for being a just a stone without using an emulsion or anything. Incredibly smooth to the touch. This is a... My stone's kind of hard to read it. So the, the yellow side here is a 7.5 micron or a FIPA 800. The red side here, pink, is a 3.2 micron or a FIPA 1200. So, I mean, this, this stone's getting up there around that 6,000 grit on the pink side. The nice thing about these stones is they can be refreshed. As they glaze, they can be lapped on silicon carbide sandpaper with silicon carbide powder. You can freshen them up with a silicon carbide lapping stone. And what you'll do is get new abrasive to poke up through that binder. So these are a really good option. They last a long time. They give a different type of diamond edge. They'll cut any steel. And the, the really nice thing is they can be refreshed. They, they can, you can lap them and keep them refreshed and they get better with time. These do have a break in. So do, I should go back to that. So do diamond plates, especially coarse electroplated diamond plates. They will shed abrasive and they will break in. So both of these types of stones get a little bit better with time. You can get these through Gridomatic for about $84. They have the full progression, 80, 150, 240, 400, and 800, 1200. And that's in the FIPA rating. Really don't need to pay attention to the FIPA rating or the JIS grit, any of that if you don't want to. You, with the with the Veneve stones, you can just pay attention to your micron. 7, 5, 3, 2. What that means is that the particles are between 3 and 2 micron on this side and between 7 and 5 micron on this side. I'm not exactly sure how they get that average, that rating, but that's that's what they're, they're showing there. You get about 1 millimeter of abrasive. Another really good option. Something else I'd like to talk about with abrasives. Everybody gets into all this craziness of the grit ratings, the jumps, and their progressions. You can roughly jump three times the grit rating. So this is a 320 grit, Norton Crystallon Silicon Carbide. I can go from this 320 to a 1000 or my 1200, no problem. I can make the jump from 300 electroplated diamond to 1200. That's four times. That's for general sharpening. If we're trying to go for a, a scratch-free perfect mirror, 
we need a very tight progression to work those scratches out of the bevel. But three three times is the, the good rule of thumb. So if you start with a 320, you can jump to a 1,000, give or take. And then from a 1,000 to a three or 4,000. Some folks will make the jump from 1,000 to 6,000. Your technique and skill is going to play into that some, and it'll get better with time, obviously. Another thing about grit and ratings and such is like on these um, Spyderco ceramics. You know, the, the, they say that the fine is a 4,000, or the ultra fine is a 4,000. I, I know how the stone feels. I know the finish it produces. That's all I really care about. You know, they have medium fine, ultra fine. I really don't care about the numbers. I know how the stone feels and the edge that it produces. That's that's more what you got. I think you've got to pay attention to is the the way the stone feels and the edge that it gives you. You don't have to get caught up in the in the craziness of tight progressions and such for general, just getting them scary sharp. If you, whether it be a Shapton Pro, Shapton Glass, silicon carbide. Even diamond. If, if you go with a 300, a 1,000, and anywhere between a 3 and a 5,000, you got it covered. Yeah, those, those stones will do everything that you ask of them for getting a knife sharp. I rambled on for a little bit here. Just really wanted to show off some different types of abrasives and just get the information out there in, in, a, in a manner that, you know, is somewhat simple because I know when I started doing this it, I was confused like all right we got silicon carbide we got electroplated diamond we got resin bonded diamond um you got say your shaft and glass stones they're an aluminum oxide but in a, a ceramic binder you know that it gets confusing you know I'm not really getting into how they cut how they abrade and why or how the abrasive is distributed throughout the plate or the stone but I just wanted to give a quick Quick overview of some different types of abrasives, what they're capable of, some of the little facts about them. And, and as videos go on, you know, we'll, we'll get into them. I know we already did a electroplated diamond edge. We've done a silicon carbide edge. We'll probably do a diamond and then finish on the veneve. This, this veneve 7.5 and 3.2 is a killer finishing stone. We'll do a full spider co progression because that's a pretty popular setup. And I like how those ceramics cut. Either way, I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening, everyone. See you next time.